Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this UK Indian Business Council webinar on accessing the Indian online food and drink market, um, featuring Godrej Nature's Basket, India's first, foremost, and fastest growing gourmet food and drink retailer. My name is Sarah Panjwani, and I manage uh, the retail lifestyle and logistics sector at the UKIBC, and I'll be moderating this session. Um, our speaker is Mohit Khatter, who is managing director of Godrej Nature's Basket. Um, he will talk about new developments in India's rapidly growing gourmet food and drink sector to cater to demands from the ever-evolving Indian consumer. Uh, he will focus on Nature's Basket's success story in this niche market and highlight ways in which UK food and drink players can capitalize on these growing trends and succeed in the Indian online grocery market. Hope that sounds good. Um, before we begin, I'd like to familiarize you with the toolbox on the right-hand side of your screen. Just to let you know, uh, everybody is on mute at the moment during the course of the webinar to keep any background noise to a minimum. But if you have a question, please drop it into the little bracket on the toolbox to your right in the uh, please type your question here section. So send me your question and I'll take it up during our Q&A session at the end. Um, for now, to make sure you can all hear me clearly, could I please ask that you all use the raise your hands button on the toolbar? Uh, could you please click the raise your hand button just to make sure that we you know everything's okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, right. So this just um, before I start, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Um, I'm delighted to welcome Mohit Khatter as the managing director of Code Kitchen Nature's Basket. Um, Prior to Nature's Basket, uh, Mohit was actually president at Subiksha, which is a major Indian discount supermarket and pharmacy retail chain. He also held uh, senior positions in product sales and brand management uh, in renowned companies like Titan Industries and Beckett Beckins India Limited. Um, he has extens extensive experience in sales, marketing, and retailing of consumer goods and services across FMCG lifestyle and retail organizations. Um, so we're very, very pleased to have him here with us today to share his expert thoughts on the Indian consumer and on the exciting new opportunities that have opened up in the Indian fine food sector. Um, so I will actually now hand over to you, Mohit, to just start your presentation, please. Uh, good morning and welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to be speaking with all of you. Uh, I'm going to be giving you a brief insight on the fast-growing market in India. And uh, uh, do, do flag your questions as you have and send them to Tara, and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, next slide. So uh, the first slide essentially talks about the Indian consumer. Uh, only from the consumer angle, we can see that uh, if the Indian consumer consumers could be segmented into different income brackets, then the market looks like a pyramid in 2010. Uh, the bottom of the pyramid, which is essentially people who are essentially below poverty line, are, was perhaps the largest segment of the market. But going forward, we see that the shape of this pyramid is changing, and there are many more consumers going into the, the middle income, the middle income brackets. And the other point to note here is that the top end of the market, which is the affluent consumers, uh, these consumers are growing far more rapidly in India than perhaps in any other part of the world. Next, please. The overall market has been absolutely uh, showing a fabulous pace of growth. So uh, if the pace of growth was at a CAGR of 8% between 2004 and 2012, in the last couple of years, it has been at 12% and projected to grow at the same rate until 2020. That makes it not just one of the largest markets in the world, but also one of the fastest growing markets in the world in terms of the overall retail sector uh, that we have in the uh, thing. The other point to remember is that most of the Indian market is unorganized and uh, it's, it, it basically comprises of very small stores, about 14 million odd outlets comprise the bulk of this market. Next slide, please. Within this, as I mentioned, the largest sector of the retail market in India is the food and grocery or the food and drink market. Uh, and 60% uh, of the market uh, is comprised of uh, food. And most of this food essentially comes from 
uh, traditional food, not necessarily gourmet food. Gourmet food is just about 0.5% of the market. The, the only good thing is that it's growing significantly faster. Uh, next slide, please. The uh, growth rates that we have seen in the traditional food market are roughly about 12 to 17 percent, whereas the gourmet food market specifically over the last couple of years has been growing nearly at about 20 percent annually. Uh, so even though its size in the overall context of the Indian market is let's say only about 1 percent of the overall market, the fact is that even this 1 percent is very, very large. Uh, if you were to compare this size, it would, we are roughly talking about uh, uh, you know, a size of roughly 3 billion US dollars, which is a pretty large segment within, uh, you know, within the overall Indian market context. And given the fact that the rate of growth of affluent consumers in the country is very, very high, we do expect these growth rates only to go up in the next couple of years and, and not to really saturate or, or come down. Some of the examples here, some of the categories like cheese or imported wines or pasta have been logging absolutely fabulous uh, rates of growth. And this goes on to not just some of the products which are shown here, but across various other segments, be it let's say sauces or be it condiments and be it um, uh, cold cuts or meats. It, it just goes across the entire segment uh, of the food and drink market in, in the country. Next slide, please. So uh, by and large, if you were to look at the overall construct of the market, what you find is that modern retail, which is essentially supermarkets and hypermarkets, comprise less than 2% of the overall food and beverage market in the country. However, if you were to look only at cities, uh, the large cities in the country, for instance, Mumbai or Delhi or Bangalore or, or uh, Chennai, etc., in some of these cities, modern uh, contribution of food and grocery through modern trade is now up to a 20%, which is pretty large, which only tells you that with time and as these formats expand into uh, smaller cities or tier two cities and tier three cities, this pace of growth is only going to accelerate. Within gourmet retail, however, the scenario is slightly different. Instead of only 2% being contributed by modern retail, at a country level, about 40% is being contributed by modern retail. So bulk of the business in of gourmet food in the country comes from modern retailers such as ourselves. Next slide, please. So there are multiple players in the market, now within the Indian food and beverage market, in the organized space. So right from Nature's Basket, which is essentially, uh, though we are a gourmet player, we're not, we don't really play in the, uh, in the mid-market space. There are various other players, including formats from the Tata Group, which is one of the largest business houses in the country. We have formats from Reliance, which is another uh, very, very large business conglomerate from India. There is the Future Group, which has multiple formats in food and drink across the country. Uh, and of course, there are new, uh, newer online formats, etc. as well. Uh, very recently, the Tata Group went into a joint venture with Tesco, and, and they opened a couple of their stores last year. Uh, there has also been a tie-up between Walmart and one of the Indian players called Bharti Retail, and, and they went into formats uh, a couple of years ago. Now, unfortunately, the JV was dissolved last year due to some complications, but uh, uh, Walmart uh, is staying back and opening new stores uh, in India, in some of the cities in India. Next slide, please. So while there are multiple players in the uh, traditional food market, in the gourmet food market, the scenario is relatively uncluttered. We have few players. In some cities, there would be only a single player. Uh, and in some cities, there could be, let's say, two or three players. So it is not really a, uh, it is not really a cluttered market in this space. And therefore, uh, newer entrants are likely to, help, uh, are likely to help not just grow the market, but also establish their own businesses far faster. Next slide, please. Uh, I think uh, there are multiple factors which are driving the growth of the gourmet market. And when you know, when I say gourmet, we are talking about food and drink that is non-traditional in the typical Indian sense. So we are not talking about you know a typical food and drink that has been that has originated from India. We are talking about international food. We are talking about niche products. We are talking about health products, etc. All of which is pretty nascent in in the country. Uh, and it is 
largely driven by three big factors. One is uh, rising disposable incomes, and that is something I had covered in my first chart as well, uh, talking about how affluence in the top end of the market, the top three to five percent of the market, is growing. Uh, change of eating habits, and that is something that we have been seeing uh, influence of different cultures, different cuisines coming into the country. And eating habits as people start working, as couples start working, their eating habits change. And that is something that is driving the growth in consumption in gourmet retail. And then increased travel. Uh, people are traveling hell of a lot. They are increasingly being exposed to different foods from around the world. And that is something which is driving the growth of this sector. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, that brings me to online retail, and online retail is possibly the newest constituent of the retail market in the country. Relatively new, but obviously uh, uh, in line with what is happening in the rest of the world, the fastest growing segment of the market. Uh, and when I talk about uh, online retail, I'm not just referring to food and grocery, but the entire, the entire spectrum uh, of online retail at this point of time. The average growth rate expected in this market on a year-to-year -year basis is about 45 to 50 percent, not just currently, but even in the next couple of years to come. Uh, in fact, what we are seeing possibly at this time is growth rates higher than 45 to 50 percent, but we do expect it to settle down in the course of the next two to three years. That's point number one. Point number two is that though there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of growth happening in the sector, grocery, food, grocery and beverage are possibly the latest entrant to you know to really join this bandwagon so at this point of time uh, if you were to ask me what is that you know what is the contribution of online retail to total food retail that number would be absolutely minuscule perhaps not even measurable because this whole scenario is just under a year old in, in the country but the rate at which it is growing the rate at which consumers are adopting the convenience offered by this format is absolutely mind-boggling uh, we we seeing absolutely huge numbers and I will share some of those numbers with you in, in uh, one of the next slides Internationally, we have seen that uh, online grocery retail grows at about you know seven times faster than on-ground formats, and we expect the Indian market to be no different from what is happening worldwide. Next slide, please. So internationally, of course, uh, in UK itself, there is Ocado, which has which has been doing an, uh, which has been doing a wonderful job in growing the online space. Similarly, there is Fresh Direct in the US. There's Amazon Fresh. And then there are various other players in China and South Korea, etc. We, we do expect the Indian market to be absolutely in line with those trends. And what we have seen over the last one year uh, completely reestablishes our faith that the Indian grocery market is up for grabs and online is going to be a large player in possibly the times to come. Uh, next slide, please. So these are some of the players who are operating in the Indian online grocery space. Uh, Big Basket was possibly one of the first entrants uh, towards end of 2011. So though they have been around, they've really come into their own this year. And it is perhaps in 2015, which has been a, a kind of benchmark here for most of the players listed here, whether it's local Banya, whether it's Grofers, whether it's Zopna or Peppertap, most of them operating in similar markets uh, with models that are marginally different from each other. So while Big Basket and Zopna and Local Banya have a model wherein they operate their warehouses and uh, service all the markets that they are in from the warehouses that they have opened, uh, Grofers and Paper Tap operate a completely different model. In their case, the model uh, is sans any inventory. They don't carry any inventory at all. They don't have any warehouses. They only have delivery boys who, who pick up stock from uh, the most convenient store and deliver it to the customer. So uh, they do essentially tie-ups with retailers, list their product on their side. So it's like a marketplace model, which operates completely on the strength only of delivery uh, of delivery people, not not necessarily warehouse, uh, not necessarily any warehousing or picking staff, etc. And they have had varied success in the market. Uh, most of them at this point of time are loss making, and are expected to continue to be loss making for the next couple of years. But what they are aiming for is a large chunk of this very, very fast growing market. There are, of course, other players in the non-food space, and most of them are also talking about getting into food in a very big way. One of the largest players in the country, for instance, at this point of time, is an Indian entity called Flipkart. And then there are uh, people like Amazon, etc. Uh, Amazon is, of course, well known. 
who is already in the food space, but they are trying to up the entire game by launching, uh, you know, a one-hour delivery model in, uh, you know, in select markets in the country. Next slide, please. This brings me to Nature's Basket, uh, which is a part of Godridge. Uh, next slide, please. Which is a part of Godridge, and Godridge is one of the leading Indian business houses, more than a hundred years old, and has been rated consistently rated as one of the best places to work for in India. Uh, it is known as one of the business houses that is not just old, but it's extremely ethical, extremely uh, people caring, and and uh, uh, consumers trust them for the quality of products that they bring uh, to the table. Uh, as a group, its turnover is roughly about 4 billion US dollars and it operates across many different countries with over 30,000 employees. Uh, products are widely used, etc. And Nature's Basket happens to be one of the newest and youngest entities within the Godridge group. And of course, Nature's Basket has interest in gourmet retailing and not necessarily in, in the mass market retailing. Next slide, please. Our singular vision has been to create a differentiated business model and this, uh, when I say a singular vision, uh, for India, uh, as most of you saw in one of my earlier slides, it is the middle class which is possibly the largest segment of the market and that's a segment that we do not cater to. We are essentially catering to the top 5% of the Indian market which essentially means discerning consumers, affluent consumers and consumers in select cities, in select catchments, not necessarily uh, you know, across the board. As of now, we operate stores in five cities only. Next slide, please. We were, uh, you know, Nature's Basket as a business was perhaps the first of its kind in the country. Uh, by virtue of our early start, we remain the biggest. But we are also, I mean, it's a matter of great pride for us that we're not only considered the biggest, but also the best in the business till date. Uh, we're roughly, uh, this year, we should be completing about seven years of existence as a company. Our customers include the who's who uh, from around the, the country. These include uh, not just uh, powerful politicians and bureaucrats, but also uh, the who's who from the film and television fraternity in the country, senior journalists, senior executives, and senior managers, etc. People who travel the world, people who understand and appreciate good food. Uh, they form the crux of consumers uh, for our business. The good thing about this is that uh, this segment of consumers is, is relatively price insensitive. Uh, they, do not, uh, they, they do not really bother about growing rates of inflation or recession or anything of that kind. Uh, they have immense buying power and, and that is what gives business the sustenance. And I think it is on uh, the back of such consumers that today our business has been consistently uh, the fastest growing uh, gourmet retail business in the country. And our growth rates have been, of course, much higher than traditional retailers as well. Uh, move on, please. Yeah. Currently, we have stores uh, uh, across five of the largest cities in the country, which includes Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Pune. And we are, of course, evaluating into, into uh, many, many other cities, which include cities like Chennai, Kolkata, etc., Goa. Uh, there are many more. The average size of our stores is about 3,000 square feet. As of now, we operate about 33 stores. Uh, the one factor that unites all of our stores is that all of these stores are niche stores and, and they are like boutique stores. They're not necessarily like uh, big supermarkets with endless aisles. Move on, please. Next slide. Uh, the fact that 70% of our assortment uh, is imported uh, which includes not just a package product, but includes fruits and vegetables. We, we import berries from Europe and we import fruits from Southeast Asia and so on and so forth. Uh, there is a lot of product in the store which is not of Indian origin and that is what gives the business a very unique position because there are consumers who, who want those select products or select brands which they have seen on their trips abroad and they would like to you know, buy them in India and uh, our business provides a perfect platform. I think what we have perfected is the art of providing food not just of uh, you know uh, international origin but also of Indian origin which are very very unique and differentiated and today when consumers you know when they don't find a particular product and they don't know where to go uh, the safest answer that they have is okay you know let me go to a nature's basket I'm sure they will have it and, and that is what has been the success of the business. I think what we have done very successfully is the fact that despite catering to a very niche set of consumers 
our average throughput in the business continue to be very, very high. They uh, are in fact twice as high as that of any other traditional retailer and that is what gives the business its strength. The fact that we are located in residential catchments which means we are very close to consumers, it enables us to offer services like a free home delivery of, of customers orders, it enables customers to come to us a little bit more frequently uh, and that is something which has been working for us. The other thing being a gourmet business we have consistently driven is the fact that we offer superior service levels in the staff. Uh, in the country and perhaps in many, many retail uh, formats across the world, uh, you know, what, uh, they, are, they are notorious because they do not offer any service level. And here in our stores, if you go into a store and go to ask for help, or even before you ask for help, there would be an attendant uh, talking to you and, you know, helping you make your purchases for the day. Next slide, please. See, these are just some pictures of how our stores look. Essentially, our stores are made to look like boutique stores. They don't necessarily look like large supermarkets. And that's a very, very conscious decision that we have taken. Move on, please. Rebecca, next slide. Yeah. So uh, the way we do our stores, we, uh, we, we don't carry endless aisles. We essentially carry islands where you know people can uh, navigate very, very easily. They can go around products, appreciate products, browse through them, read labels and so on and so forth. And uh, that makes us very good at selling niche products because we ensure that each section is manned and each section has an attendant to, to talk to customers. So in fact, you know, the, the kind of picture that you see here is essentially all products that are new in the country and that are being put up and, and that is just from the snack food section. Move on please. Uh, one of the other initiatives uh, that the business has taken is uh, to bet big online. So in a country where you know most retailers were deliberating whether or not to jump on to the online bandwagon, uh, Nature's Basket took a call that no, this is a you know this is a format of the future, and it is not something that the business can ignore. Uh, taking a cue from that, we set up our own website and uh, we launched our apps, and the kind of growth that we have seen over the last just a couple of months, the new the, the website and the apps went live only uh, in the first week of April and we are today towards end of July so it's just been four months since this has been operating and I will share with you in the next slide the way the business has grown. Uh, what the website offers is of course not just the fact that we offer uh, the entire range that we offer in the stores. The entire look and feel of the website is, is premium, uh, given the fact that our in-store experience that customers have is that of a premium gourmet store. We wanted to retain that feeling even in the online space. Uh, we're using best-in-class mobile applications. Uh, we're using technology to streamline delivery. Uh, the navigation, the user interface is very, very powerful that we have. And maybe, you know, uh, uh, when you kept the time, you guys must browse through it. The, ID is naturesbasket.co.in. Next slide, please. So uh, this uh, chart essentially looks at the kind of growth that we have seen in the online business. So the red line really depicts the number of orders that we started getting per day. So from about 116 orders that we were getting per day, today we are moving to a level of roughly 1,780, so nearly 1,800 orders a day. And that, that is kind of telling you the growth that we are seeing uh, in the business. It's absolutely rapid and fantastic. Next slide, please. Some of the other services that Nature's Basket as a business offers uh, to retain its, to, you know, to strengthen its position as a, as a gourmet destination uh, is gifting. We, we have believed that gifting is an integral part of the business and that is something that we must be very good at. And gifting not in the sense of you know putting supermarket packs and putting ribbons around them, but having customized gifting options for customers available. And, and that is something that we have done. And I will share with you some pictures in the, in the next few slides. The other thing that we do is consistently hold events with marquee chefs, you know, with very, very well-known names in the business, people who know the food and drink industry very, very well, and people who can recommend and talk to consumers and communicate with them about how easily they could use some of those products uh, in their in their daily lives. And that is that is something, that is a strength that has worked very well for us because we've been able to introduce many a new product in the country on the strength of, of these events. 
Fresh Food Theatre is a weekly event that happens in all our stores. It's a weekend event on Saturdays and Sundays where our in-store chefs conduct demonstrations uh, on how to use specific ingredients and how to use specific products. And that is something we do because we deal with a lot of cuisine, we deal with a lot of ingredients which is not of Indian origin and some consumers may or may not be familiar with it. In order to make them familiar with those ingredients, we hold these events on a regular basis. And then we of course have party menus and platters of meats and cheese, etc. I think this all needs to be seen in the context of the fact that uh, all of this is pretty new in the Indian market and it is not something which is being done by most other brick and mortar retailers and that is what is setting us apart. Next slide please. So this is uh, how some of our gifting sections look in our stores. There are assorted uh, gifts that customers can choose from. Of course all the gifts have different containers but essentially they have packages of different kinds of food products and there are different packaging options not just in terms of the container but also in terms of the embellishments that go on it to make it look uh, drool worthy in, in some sense. Next slide please. Uh, these are just some pictures of the events that we hold in our stores with well-known chefs. I think one of the pictures here is with Gary and George uh, from uh, MasterChef Australia. They, they are of course well-known names around the world. And then there are some of the chefs of Indian origin who, who made it pretty big and who are popular television faces in India. And uh, they are regularly in our stores conducting events or launching their books or talking about health and so on and so forth. Next slide please. Fresh Food Theatre, as I mentioned, is a is an in-store event that essentially happens in our stores every weekend where our in-store chefs uh, demonstrate uh, how to use ingredients or sauces or condiments and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. We conduct, of course, uh, events uh, around different themes. Typically, we choose a theme. Our marketing team chooses a theme every month and we then promote products around that theme. So for instance, uh, the pictures that you see here are from a Mexican team that was being conducted in our stores just last month. So we set up displays, we highlight products from specific brands, uh, we conduct demonstrations around that particular cuisine, uh, we give you know, promotional offers to our customers to come and try those products. So uh, you know, most other supermarkets would possibly do only a promotion or a discounting of the products, whereas we do the entire 360 degree activation around it in order to actually make the consumers adopt the particular product. Next slide please. Of course this year uh, uh, you may be aware uh, we are actually showcasing for the very first time uh, British foods in our stores and for a period of one month from September 11 and uh, this uh, is an activity where a number of British brands that are already in our stores will be highlighted, there would be events around those products, there would be uh, demonstrations, there would be product samplings of some of those products and there would of course be promotional offers as well. So it promises to be a very, very big and exciting time for us given the fact that this coincides with the beginning of the festive season in India. The timing of this event couldn't have been better because usually the festive season sees uh, you know, an uptick in the footfalls in the stores so there are newer consumers coming into stores and this is what would be greeting them in terms of uh, you know, a, a British food promotion. The products and brands that you see are not the right brands, they are from a previous promotion, but uh, I think the point that I wanted to make was that uh, we're doing an accent on British foods from next month onwards, from September onwards, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. Of course, the objective is to highlight British products and, and uh, share customer insight, share customer feedback, see if customers you know, want to learn specific things or they want to suggest specific uh, things uh, and, and that of course is something that will be captured and then relayed to the respective brands. I'll move on please. So food demos, in-store visual merchandising, product samplings, all of this is going to be there. So if some of you are in India around the time or, or you want to take the time to visit India and our stores around that time, I think that will be an absolutely fantastic opportunity. Next slide please. Some of the brands that are participating uh, uh, from uh, the UK food and drink market include brands like Twining, Newby, Bellwire, Tate and Lyle, Clipper. I mean I'm sure you'll be familiar with most of these brands uh, a lot more than I am. Next slide please. 
yeah, I mean, MacBerrys, Weetabix, Bachelors, Discovery, Jamie Oliver, Lloyd Gossman. Of course, some of these brands have been in the country and have been in our stores for a very, very long time. But any promotion or any showcase of this nature gives the brand an altogether new life. And I think that's what is likely to happen. You usually see uh, an increase in sales of those brands by about 200 to 300% during the promotion period. And then, of course, it settles down to about 100% growth level after the promotion period is over. And that is what we are expecting for some of these brands to happen. Next slide, please. Of course, there are various touch points that we have with consumers. So it's not only consumers who come into our stores and engage with us, but there are various other platforms through which we engage with our consumers. There are newsletters, both in the physical and in the digital space. There's an entire loyalty program that we run. Uh, there's an online and a very, very active digital presence that we have. We're very active on social media, active in e-commerce as well, as, as I mentioned. And these are some of the platforms through which we engage and viral out our marketing communication. So, for example, if it's a showcase of British product, it will be highlighted in all uh, these forums and all these platforms to all the customers who follow that particular space. Next slide, please. So over 3 lakh fans on Facebook, uh, over 8,000 followers on Twitter, move on please. Uh, pretty, very, very active on social media and these are, these are forums where we see our customers actually engaging with us. We see engagement rates of about 8 to 10 percent and that's a very, very healthy and active uh, interaction level. Uh, we have over 3.5 lakh loyal consumers and I think the good thing here is that over 70 percent of our business month on month, day after day comes from loyal consumers. And that is what gives us, and they actively look forward to what we are doing in our stores or, you know, what's the latest promotion or what's the latest event that's happening in our stores. And they are, they are you know, uh, they are following up with us to participate in such events. So that's something uh, which, again, as a property, we have reached pretty successfully. Move on, please. I think the big question here for many of you could be that, okay, if India is such an exciting market, we also hear a lot of negative stories on India about, labeling and about uh, the kind of people and, and the fact that it's a very bureaucratic market and so on and so forth. And I think all of that is true in some sense. But it is also true that just as there are people who are possibly uh, not as serious about business, there are also people who are extremely serious about business and about growth and about, you know, growing the market in the right manner. And there are many of them who we, really, as a very, very ethical business, work with. We possibly work with some of the largest importers, we possibly work with some of the best importers in the country who not only understand our requirements but who also understand the requirements from the perspective of the Indian authorities. So they understand what should go on a label and what should not go on a label. They understand the fact what will get a product through. Is there a particular ingredient in the product that is likely to get it into trouble? They would be able to highlight that to you a lot earlier than you know, the product actually facing the problem when it hits the Indian shores. So uh, we are in touch with such people and uh, through UK IDC we can of course uh, help you get in touch with such people and they would be the right people to advise you about what to do on labeling, about what to do uh, on product specific ingredients and of course it is for you know your companies, your respective companies to think in terms of how, uh, whether you want to launch in India and if you want to launch in India, how do you really want to go about it? Do you really want to build your distribution reach? across hundreds of Indian cities or do you want to concentrate on specific cities or do you want to concentrate on specific regions maybe. Uh, that's one. How do you want to build your awareness? Do you want to do you know, possibly mass media advertising or do you want to take it one step at a time, going to niche groups, going to niche customers, going to niche stores and, and you know, building it one step at a time. Uh, of course, there are various routes available and as marketers, I'm, I'm sure many of you would be familiar with all of that. Uh, but yes, if there is any help that is required from us in sharing names, we would be very happy to share those names, uh, you know, of distributors or importers who are possibly the right people to deal with. We, we would be happy to share that with UK IBC and of course uh, you can be in touch with uh, UK IBC to, to get the same from us. And I think that really brings me to an end of the presentation and I'll be happy to take questions if there are any. Uh, Becky, all yours. Tara? Yes. Um, hello. Many thanks, Moet, for that excellent overview. It's really fascinating, the presentation. Um, Thank you. And I, I really, really well done. And, um,
especially this slide on the exponential growth that Nature's Basket has enjoyed since launching your right. website. Particularly right. interesting uh, because it clearly just shows how keen uh, Indian consumers are and how ready they are to buy these premium foods both online and offline. And it's oh, like absolutely. it's amazing. Right. We know that the offline markets in India are rocking. I mean, the kind of growth rates that we are seeing uh, both in the offline stores and in the online space is absolutely amazing at this point of time. Yeah, it's like they've been waiting a really long time for these yeah, kind of absolutely. upgraded services. And finally, Nancy Basket is making it available. So thank you. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, I will now open the floor to some questions. Um, so this is the first one. I think we've got one, one question start off with, uh, Mohit, yeah. Um, yeah. that is, uh, are all the products that you sell packaged and labeled specifically for the Indian market? Yes, uh, most of the products that we are selling are uh, packaged and labeled for the Indian market. We currently carry roughly about 8,000 SKUs in our stores and most of them are labeled and packaged for the Indian market. We used to carry products that were not specifically packaged and labeled. Uh, for instance, we used to carry products of Japanese origin earlier, which were which had you know Japanese labels and so on and so forth. But those have been completely stopped by the Indian government and Indian authorities. So currently, products that are not specifically packaged are slowly going out of the market, and that is not a route I would recommend to anybody wanting to see the Indian market in the long term. I mean, if anybody sees this about their long-term prospects in the market, then you would need to have India-specific labeling as well. Yeah, because that will help you kind of circumvent all the red yeah, tape issues. It will help you come into the country in the right way and it will help you stay there for much longer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I'm going to actually ask uh, on behalf of Elsa, who may not have joined, I'm not totally sure, uh, but basically, uh, you know, they, her members of uh, are from FTE, as I said, Food and Drink Exporters Association. Probably a few attendees of the webinar are members as well. And um, there was a survey, and uh, they they seemed very interested in India, and you know, India as a long-term strategy. But again, yeah. we're worried about all the challenges, such as the red tape issues and the labeling, so similar things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as you mentioned in your slide mode, you think that the best way that they can deal with this is by working with sort of um, um, so I mean, in is how do you deal with it and, and that would be as you said I think with the, the big promoter, the big importers who are distributors. Can you there, are, there are that? specific promoters who have been, who've been doing, there, there are specific importers and there are specific uh, uh, you know organizations that have been in the business of importing food and drink and have built large successful businesses on that for the last couple of years. So rather yeah. than working with people who are, let's say, fly-by-night operators and who have no history or background in that market, right. uh, one wants to identify who those organizations are and who those people are and, and then work with them and, you know, build relationships with them rather than working with, you know, very, very small players or people who don't really understand or who okay. have not been in the business for long enough. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. I think that's, that's exactly the way to go. Find right, and over the last uh, over the last two years or so, there have been a lot of changes uh, in the labeling regime in the country, and that has caused a lot of confusion, and, and that is completely understandable. Right. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the Indian market was also completely unregulated in, in terms of you know you know what goes on the label and so on and so forth. So I yeah. think what the authorities have done is to lay out a broad framework, and as yes. long as companies are complying to that framework, I don't think there is a challenge. Yes. Fine. So, as somebody who's dealing with 70% products in the store being imported, you can imagine the challenge for somebody like us if we didn't have these imported products in the store. Absolutely. But the fact of the matter is we are able to get our consignments month after month, day after day without a problem because there are people who are, who are managing this business very well. Yeah, and then you just have to comply with the broad framework, yeah. as you said. But you're complying with the law, I mean, the law is not going to go after you. Yes. It's the whole maturing of the Indian food and drink market, Absolutely. isn't it? And therefore, there are more rules and regulations. Right. So it might seem confusing now, but it's kind of it's going to be clearer as it right. as it kind of you know develops. Um, okay, we have one more question. Uh, sure. Do you arrange shipping from the UK, or do you work with shippers that we would need to source for you to purchase through? 
So typically we, we work with uh, either importers or consolidators and they arrange the shipping, they, they go and do everything. We, we right. don't necessarily get into the logistics part of it at all. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, we essentially have uh, very transparent terms with some of our importers and there are some importers who bring in stuff exclusively for us and not necessarily uh, you know, for giving it to the other retailers as well. So we work with both kinds, exclusive importers who work only for us and importers who also bring in stuff to give it to some of the other retailers in the market. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. And they handle all the all the logistics and the shipping and stuff. Right? Yes, yes, they handle everything. They handle everything. And uh, similarly, if any of the companies in in uh, UK would like to deal with uh, them, they they will do all all of the basic uh, legwork. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so there's a question about trade fairs. Uh, yeah. Saying that which trade fairs would you be attending in this year, uh, and um, which ones do you recommend? Uh, you know, some of the attendees should look into spending in India. Uh, trade fairs specifically in India? Yes. And, and uh, maybe a couple, you know, in, in other places. But both. Uh, okay, the trade, the trade fairs that happen in India are, are not so great, to be honest. But yeah. amongst the best uh, in India is a, is a trade show called Ahar. Ahar. Which happens, Ahar, which happens in the month of November in Delhi. Right. So that is amongst the best in the country, but you know it is it is nowhere close to uh, what happens internationally. Let's say a CL or something like that. So it is nowhere close to that, but it is amongst the best in the country. Thank you. So uh, I would possibly be attending that. But otherwise, trade fairs like uh, you know uh, what happens in the Middle East or what happens uh, in in uh, France uh, once in a year, the CR shows. I mean, they they are definitely amongst the better ones. Thank you, Mohit. Good. Yeah. Uh, one, one more question. Just one second. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to. Uh, this is actually uh, Helen Blackburn who is. Uh, you have to be louder. Can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I can. Um, so this is. It's not so much a question. It is a question. Your voice is again gone off, Tara. Okay, sorry. Uh, what yeah. about now? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Helen uh, Blackburn is an attendee, and she said that she sat next to you at the India Food Forum dinner in January. Um, yeah. And uh, basically, she's uh, the exciting thing is they're actually launching their uh, organic British UHT milk product in September in India. Uh, or organic what? Uh, British UHT milk products. Oh yes, I do remember the lady and uh, say a big hello to her. Yes, she's saying hello to you. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it was lovely to have met her and very excited that her products will be in India and uh, we would love to have it in our stores. Yeah, actually she's actually saying, <laughs> I think she's saying exactly the same thing. She's saying, how can we link with your promotions uh, and your in-store promotions because there seems to be a lot of synergies. So maybe the um, I'll connect you to Helen. Are the products there? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, it will be launching in September at the same time as your promotion. When are they likely okay. to hit India? I'll connect you. Oh, I think in in September, uh, she says. So she's in she's September. To launch it in time. That's and she already has a distributor lined up, etc. Yes, she does. Yes. Okay, then that's fantastic. So if the products are in by the time the fair is beginning, we'll be happy to include it. Okay. So what I will do is I'll connect you to Helen offline by email and then Not you can problem. just have a conversation with her. Not a problem. Pleasure. Yeah. Um, Pleasure. Very good morning. And one last one. I'm just asking on behalf of any of the companies who might be interested in coming to your promotion. Uh, yeah. Is it still possible to get a few products as samples uh, in, your, in your British food promotion? Uh, well, that really depends on the brands. I mean, the deals are being worked out with the respective brands if they want to sample it out free or whether 
So a lot of people, a lot of brands actually sample their products free, uh, but whether yeah. you can take uh, you know unconsumed samples with you, I'm not very sure. I, we, we need to work it out with respective brands. Okay. If somebody so wants can... to take samples, you know, to consumers, uh, there are a lot of brands who do that. So if they are, if they are sampling and you want to carry it with you, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Well, if we have any further questions after the webinar about this, I will put you in touch uh, with the company. Not a problem. It will be a pleasure. It will be a pleasure, Tara. Okay, great, Moit. Thank you very much. Um, and there is a last question. Sorry, suddenly they started coming through. Um, there is a last question, and that is, how important is a robust and resilient cold chain in, in ensuring quality is maintained in gourmet and fresh products? And oh, very is, important. Yeah. Very, very very important specifically if you're dealing with the temperature sensitive products because India is a very very hot country a hot and humid country where products spoil very fast so if your product is temperature sensitive which means if you're dealing with either cheese or dairy or meats or, or even chocolates for that matter or patisserie uh, then your you know your products need to go through the cold chain uh, yes. there are uh, yes in general there is a dearth of cold storages in the country, but if you want to talk about the specific, uh, specifically about large cities, you know where gourmet stores like ourselves exist, then in these cities there is no dearth of cold chains or cold storages, and uh, and the cold chain is maintained right from the port till the time it is delivered to the customer, uh, which is the retailer, and the retailer has his own cold chain in terms of all his refrigeration and cold rooms and so on and so forth. So extremely critical. In essence, the, the, it's improved a lot the cold chain infrastructure. It has improved the a lot, specifically if you are in the big cities. In the smaller cities, you may have a problem. Yes. But in the large metro cities, if you are dealing with, there should be absolutely no issue. Okay, that's great to know. Thank you. That's good for yeah. me as well. Um, all right, I think we will we will uh, end at this point. Um, okay. And I can just say that any unanswered questions we will pass on to you later and connect after the webinar. No uh, problem. We're running, running out of time. So yeah. um, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much, Mohit, for a fantastic presentation. Uh, really, I, I learned a lot, and I think everybody would agree. Um, yeah. And uh, hopefully we can uh, you know, work together for, for future promotions and get the word out to British companies, because I know many are very yeah. interested. Uh, I, I enjoyed making the presentation and talking to everybody as much. Uh, as you did. So uh, thank you very much for having me uh, do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody. Thanks, Vicky. Yeah, bye. <laughs>